Hey YouTube, today we're adding a cycle lane to Bricktown. Hey everyone and welcome to Brick Talk TV, I hope you're well. Today's episode is a continuation of our Rebuild of Bricktown series where we will be building our new cycle lane. If you've missed any of the other episodes so far in this series then do check out our Rebuild playlist and I'll stick a link here in the top right and in the description below. And also hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and remember to hit subscribe to join our community and for further updates on Bricktown. If you joined us last time, you saw at the end of the episode this view of Bricktown. We've completed our paving foundations now and our curbs are in place. So the basic foundations are in a pretty good place. So now we can start to add some creative detail to our city. Our first addition is going to be a cycle lane and our cycle lane is going to run around this loop in Bricktown. So it won't be running around the full circuit of our city, just on the inner part of this northern loop. To do that though, we're going to have to rip up some of the existing paving foundations and make some modifications. When designing the cycle lane, I looked at various other a for inspiration and there are some really interesting implementations of cycle lanes. Some even include an 8x16 road plate in a blue colour and I really like this idea but we really don't have the space to do it in Bricktown here. So instead we're going to have a fairly thin cycle lane that we can fit into our paving and a TV was a great inspiration for our build today. So let's take a closer look at the design in studio. Here you can see I've recreated the northern loop in the studio using the road plates and then begun to rebuild the central loop to include our cycle lane. I want the cycle lane at the same level as the road but I do want to have a raised barrier in between the main traffic and the cyclists. Away from the road I also want to have the same curb design when we get to the paving on the most inner part of this area so that pedestrians are protected from cyclists and that cyclists are protected from the traffic with the barrier. Most of these parts were ordered from Bricklink with the exception of the mid azure cycle lane tiles which I ordered directly from lego.com and bricks and pieces. The parts did take quite a while to arrive particularly the ones from lego but it did seem to be the cheapest way of getting those cycle lane tiles. The total cost for all of these bricks for the cycle lane was probably between 50 and 90 pounds. I've also added some corners as well so the cyclists can cycle around easier rather than having right angled corners. As a result we do have a few colour issues on getting the macaroni in the right colour but for now I've used the closest match I could and if the right colour does become available in the future I'll swap this colour out here for the more mid azure colour. So that's the blueprint for what we want to achieve, let's head back now to the lego room and start with our deconstruction of our existing paving foundations before moving to the build of the cycle lane itself. We'll start by ripping up all of the large top level plates and the 1x8 white plates we used as well. We can reuse these later so there isn't any waste, but let's speed up the deconstruction now. <laughs> Next up we're going to remove the 2x4 plates that we used to connect the paving foundations to the road plates. As we need the cycle lane as the same height as the road we need to level off the road and the outer paving foundation so we'll remove the 2x4 plates and replace them with 1x4 tiles in dark bluish grey. This will make the road look like it continues onto the plate. It does mean that the inner paving here won't be attached to the road but seeing as it's built to the right size to fit on this inner loop it should be fairly stable once we finish construction. Now let's add the 1x4 tiles.
we've completed the dark bluish grey tiles, I want a thick white line to separate the road and the cycle lane. So we're now going to add a 1x8 and a few 1x6 white tiles on the foundation plate. This will put the white line at the same level as the adjacent road plates and also give some separation between that and the barrier which we'll build later. So let's start to lay these white tiles all around our loop. Next we need to remove some of the foundation, green and line plates that we used to raise up our previous plates. Next to the white line I want to build a barrier between the roads and the cycle lane, so we're going to remove all these plates and replace them with 2x6, 2x8 and 2x3 plates in light bluish grey, all adjacent to the white line. Now we've put the foundation of our barrier in, let's put the cycle lane itself next to the barrier and to start that we'll place some macaroni tiles to give a curve at each corner. Then we'll add a 2x4 mid azure tile with a bicycle printed on it and after that the majority of the cycle lane will be covered in 2x6 mid azure or medium azure tiles. So let's tile the cycle lane. We're using a smaller macaroni tile on the inside of the curve but LEGO don't currently do that in medium majeure, so we've used a lighter shade for now. Perhaps I can swap this out once the colour that we need becomes available in the future. If it doesn't, I'm quite happy for it to be a slightly different colour for now. But let's just speed up now and see all of the tiles laid for the cycle lane. <laughs> In the corner here we're going to add a 2x2 cutaway tile here in light bluish grey just to cover up the corner studs that show through. We'll fill this in for each of our corners. Now we've completely added the cycle lane tiles our next job is to actually complete the barrier work so let's add some details to the barrier foundations. To do that we'll add various jumper tiles 1x2 and 2x2 types with a 2x4 tile in between each all in light bluish grey. So let's now speed up and cover all the barrier foundations.
So now we've tiled our foundations, where we have our jumper tiles, we're going to be putting in some barriers or some bollards on top of them. I was in two minds actually on the design of the bollard, um, but for today we're going to be using two one by one round light bluish grey bricks stuck together with a one by one round transparent plate topped with a light bluish grey round tile. I might swap this out in the future just to have one one by one round brick in the height just to make the bollard shorter as I've seen this also done in other cities and quite like the shorter ones. Let's start with two one by one rounds in the barrier to start with. Now we're going to put them all the way around our cycle lane on top of our foundations. Now the barrier is in place we turn our attention to the foundations of the inner pavement. We need to add some more plates first to raise the pavement so it's the same height as other pavements we've done in previous videos. We use this curved plate on the corner so that we have a curved curb. Then we're going to re-add our 1x8 white plates that we removed earlier. And once we've done that we need to add some more foundation plates by reusing the 2x2 line plates and some of the 2x4 green plates that we removed. So let's get going and add those to start with.
Now we've got the foundations in place, we need to top them with 3x3 light bluish grey plates. On the corners we're going to add a curved version of that plate, just to make sure that the corners remain curved in line with the cycle lane. So that's the foundations now in place for today. What we're going to do next is we're going to add the curb like we did in the other Bricktown video, but we won't be adding any paving tiles just yet. On the corner we're going to be using a 2x2 two two macaroni in light bluish grey tile, and on the inside we're going to be using a dark bluish grey quarter tile. Then for the rest of this paving we're going to use 1x8 light bluish grey tiles to create the curbs, and there's a couple of 1x2 tiles that we need also in the curbs. notice that we do have a slight issue here where we have the cycle lane interjecting on the pedestrian crossing. We're going to have to modify this barrier and the cycle lane in, in a future video in order to allow us to design a pedestrian crossing that allows minifigures to cross from one side of the road to the other. We'll cover this in a future episode so stay tuned for that but for now we'll leave it as it is. So for now that completes our cycle lane for today. Here you can see as we fly by the cycle lane that we have successfully added a cycle lane on the same level as the main road, but we've also introduced a nicely raised barrier to protect cyclists. We've also maintained the inner curb height to match the rest of Bricktown and have re-raised our foundations to give us this look. So I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. You can also see an eager Bricktown inhabitant has already tried the cycle lane out. So here's Bricktown at the end of our cycle lane reconstruction and we're making some good progress here in adding detail into the city. Join us in our next episode where we'll be looking at pedestrian crossings and we'll also be looking to create a few different options including the modifying of the cycle lanes that I mentioned earlier. If you enjoyed this video do hit that like button as it helps others see this video and hit that subscribe button with the bell notification turned on to be notified when our pedestrian crossing video hits the channel and join me next time and until then stay safe and I'll see you then.